have secret menu drinks, free tours, and hidden details. Even the biggest Potterheads probably haven't noticed. These are the best kept secrets in Universal's Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Hey everybody, today I'm at one of my favorite places on the planet, Universal's Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is where the magic of Harry Potter was brought to life in excruciating detail and there is so much to explore, it's impossible to know it all. So today I'm spilling 15 of the best kept secrets here in the Wizarding World. From some of the most obscure hidden details to activities that people don't know about and some of the best money saving tips, we are headed into both sides of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter to share some of my favorite secrets. It's gonna be seriously ridiculous. Nailed it. I'm sorry, please keep watching. I'm sorry I did that. No, I'm not. <laughs> Welcome to Hogsmeade, friends. This is the original part of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is on the Islands of Adventure side. This is where you have Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure TM, and Three Broomsticks, Hogshead. Whew, I love being here. Our first stop in Hogsmeade. Breakfast. Now I'm not telling you to make breakfast your first stop. You should absolutely get here early, especially as a resort guest, and try and get on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. But after you've done that, and before 10.30, I highly recommend eating breakfast in the Wizarding World, both here at Three Room Six and over in Diagon Alley at Leaky Cauldron, because breakfast is the most underrated meal at the Wizarding World and the best bang for your buck, and I'll show you why. I adore being in the Three Broomsticks. It really puts you inside the story. It reminds me of maybe the kids coming to Hogsmeade on a nice visit to get a butterbeer. A big question when it comes to the Wizarding World is which restaurant to eat in, Leaky Cauldron or Three Broomsticks? I like both of them quite a bit, and to be honest, I get the same thing at both, which is fish and chips. But the main difference on the menu is that breakfast is more or less the same. Three Broomsticks has a few more options, but at lunch, Three Broomsticks is more like what you'd have in the Great Hall. So it's a lot of like roast chicken, ribs, corn, potatoes, um, and the Leaky Cauldron has a few more traditionally British items. Like they have toad and hole, they have bangers and mash, scotch eggs. Both have the amazing fish and chips though, which are my favorite fish and chips in a theme park even more than Epcot. So that's what I get no matter what got my breakfast. Now today the Three Broomsticks is operating like a standard quick service where you walked up, ordered, got your food, and then found a table. Sometimes you walk up, order, and they'll help you find a table, and then they'll bring their food, the food to you. So it can vary just by based on what their operation needs. Um, but I found a table, no problem. Now here's my breakfast. Looks fabulous. This is a kid's breakfast, which is $12.99. An adult uh, breakfast is $17.99. And the kids' breakfasts are just slightly smaller versions of the adult breakfast. So there's a traditional English, which has got like black pudding and baked beans. Um, there is a porridge breakfast. There is a continental breakfast. There is a pancake breakfast, which this obviously is. And then there's an American breakfast with like scrambled eggs. So this one, as the kids, only has two pancakes instead of three. Um, and then I believe it might have slightly less meat too. But it has two pancakes, a sausage link, a piece of bacon, and a croissant. We love carbs. And then here's the reason I say that breakfast is an underrated meal because it comes with a drink, whether you're ordering a kid's meal or an adult meal, and that drink can be any kind of butterbeer. Now this is a frozen butterbeer. A frozen butterbeer normally is about $8. Uh, this is a slightly smaller than a frozen butterbeer if you ordered one full size or got one out of the cart, but it's included with your meal, which is why I say that breakfast is one of the best meals you can get because you can get your meal, which look at this, this is a lot of food. That's a big breakfast. Uh, um, plus a butterbeer for a pretty good price. What's good to know too, I didn't get it because I'm very hot right now and I walked very quickly here to make it in time for breakfast. Um, the hot butterbeer is not a smaller size. The hot butterbeer is the full size one because hot butterbeer normally is smaller than frozen or regular butterbeer. So if you get that with your meal, it will be the full size hot butterbeer, which is what I normally get. You can also get a coffee, you can also get a juice, but why get that when those are just a couple dollars each? If you want a coffee, add that on separately, but your best bang for your buck is to get some kind of butterbeer, so cheers. It's so good. Oh, it's so sweet, it's so good. Now, Obviously it's more iconic to get it and then take it in front of Hogwarts and take your picture and everything. But you might want to do that too. I've got a fun butterbeer hat coming your way in a little bit. And for me, someone who loves butterbeer, obviously, but it's so sweet, having a slightly smaller one isn't actually a bad thing. Y'all already know syrup's going all over these pancakes as well as the breakfast meats. 
you've got to. Is this anything that unique in flavor? No, it's pancake, sausage, and bacon. It's good pancake, sausage, and bacon. With the sausage, it's a little spice to it. It's, it's good, but it doesn't have a lot of heat. I like that when sausage does. So yeah, I do recommend if you haven't been to Wizarding World, you're gonna eat more than one meal in the Wizarding World, getting lunch or dinner, just because that's something a little bit more unique. I almost exclusively order off the kids' menu for lunch as well, because you can get fish and chips off the kids' menu. Um, it's just a sm slightly smaller portion, but it's only $7.50 before discount. So, eating off the kids' meal is one of my best money saving tips in the theme park. Leaves you more room for snacks, too. You know what's a bummer is that they used to have shadows of house elves up in the rafters, and I was like not seeing them. And the witch told me they stopped doing it for some reason, which is a bummer because that's a really cool detail. Um, and I feel like I didn't give you that. So I'll give you a different house elf themed detail, which is a very cool one. Obviously, much to Hermione's chagrin, the house elves are the ones doing much of the cooking and the cleaning and such throughout the Wizarding World. Um, and so they'd be the ones emptying the trash cans here at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter here in Hogsmeade. Uh, so if you look at the trash cans, they are specially made for someone very short to be able to open them and get the trash out. Also, I guess I'll give you this little detail too. I'm so bummed about those house cells. Is that if you come back to the side of three room six and look through this window, it's very dirty. You can see the dishes washing themselves almost as if by magic. Now that we've had a nice filling breakfast, it's off to Hogwarts. And again, I don't recommend coming in and immediately going to breakfast. I recommend rope dropping, riding your rides, and then going to breakfast, should you choose breakfast. Oh, Hogwarts, you're so beautiful. Never gets old, does it? And some of you might be thinking, Molly, have you lost it? Are you really gonna go ride Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey after eating pancakes and butterbeer? But no, I am not. I'm gonna do a little tour. What some people don't realize, even though this attraction makes people very, very nauseous, you can still go through the queue and explore the whole thing. This attraction has so much Harry Potter to offer. On the attraction, you are gonna see Acromantula, Chamber of Secrets, the Forbidden Forest, uh, the Basilisk, Quidditch, Dementors. But because it's a combination of a simulator on this custom made like robotic arm that flips you about it makes some people me included very very sick so a lot of people don't want to ride this but if you're a harry potter fan you're really missing out if you don't walk through the queue make sure if you want to walk through the queue that you go through the full queue not the express queue not the single rider queue uh, so you don't miss anything and while i'm going to take you on a little tour right now you can actually get one from a hogwarts student if there's a spare one Ask up at the front if they're doing castle tours, so it's like not too busy and they have enough. A team member will actually walk you through the queue and t show you all of the little details and tell you stories about Hogwarts, which is a really cool, fun, free thing you can do. Not all people know. But we're gonna rapid fire f through the queue today and I'm gonna point out some of my favorite details, starting with, as you get in, uh, here is the Mirror of Erised, the Mirror of Desire, which shows your life's greatest wishes. Weirdly, I'm not seen with Draco. Across from the mirror, you've got the witch with the hump and the one eye. Both fans will know that in Prisoner of Azkaban, uh, Harry learns that marks the passageway between Hogwarts and Honeydukes, so which is how he's able to sneak into Hogsmeade, uh, even though he doesn't have his permission slip signed. And then you gotta kind of lean over and crane yourself, but if you look back there, you will see a certain potion master's office. In the gardens, people often miss this one because the queue doesn't always fill this spot up. But if you look at the potted plants, they're mandrakes. Moving into the castle, one of my favorites are the glass counters, keeping track of the house points. Of course, Gryffindor's in the lead, but we're not far behind. We got this, Slytherin. We don't got this because the headmaster plays favorites at the end of every year, but I can dream. We've got the griffin that guards Dumbledore's office, so we must be headed in there soon. I love that they've even hung tapestries that you see in the films. And that's because they got set production designer Stuart Craig, who did all the films, to do the Wizarding World as well. 
moving into the next room, make sure you look up at all these portraits. And four of them are talking. It's the heads of houses. Helga Hufflepuff. Rowena Ravenclaw. Godric Gryffindor. And my bestie for the resties, Salazar Slytherin. Hal Selfie. Still trying to make it a thing. Moving into Dumbledore's office, you can see Albus himself, which is great. I love that he's here and alive. One of my favorites that a lot of people miss, if you look up atop the cabinets, you'll actually see a sword in a case. That is, of course, the sword of Gryffindor. Hard to see, but it's cool. I like looking at all of Dumbledore's gadgets and telescopes and things as well, but none as much as the Pensieve, which sits right here. Next is the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, which is one of my favorite parts. There's a bunch of cool things on the shelves, various books and skulls and creepy looking things. It's also where Harry, Ron, and Hermione lay out the plot of this attraction that a lot of people kind of don't understand. It's that we are visitors of Hogwarts thanks to Dumbledore and they want us to go to a history of magic less, uh, lecture with Professor Binns which shout out book reference only Professor Binns is never mentioned in the films but he's the only ghost professor of Hogwarts and he famously teaches history of magic but he's incredibly boring so Harry, Ron, and Hermione have snuck into the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom under the invisibility cloak to tell us that they are actually going to take us to a quick Quidditch match. Uh, they're going to use flu powder to get us down there after Hermione enchants a bench to fly. And I'm sure nothing will go wrong because none of their plans ever go wrong. Don't take flash pictures in here. Your pictures will look terrible and it ruins the effects for the people around you. I promise take night vision like on your Apple phone. They will come out amazingly much better than flash anyway. Anyway, um, Ron, because he's not bright, makes it snow in here, which is a fun little thing a lot of people miss. Moving right along, if you take a look at the desks, this is one of my favorite Easter eggs because it's inaccurate. Uh, you have the books on the desk. That is Dark Arts Basics for Beginners, which is the book that Professor Umbridge assigns the class in year five. However, on the wall, you've got Defense Against the Dark Arts, uh, teaching you how to defeat a Dementor. Uh, first of all, Harry never learns that in a classroom setting. Lupin teaches it to him all on his own. And second of all, if you're going to say, well, maybe these are the fifth year's books, but these are like the older kids' lessons, I have one question for you. Do you really think Professor Umbridge would teach anyone how to defeat the Ventures? We're almost in the Gryffindor common room now, and you know that because we're being greeted by the fat lady herself. Into the Gryffindor common room, where all the tapestries and wall hangings should look familiar, but my favorite detail is right over here on this little cupboard. You can actually see a wireless radio, which is the same style that they use in Deathly Hallows when on their really long camping trip to try and tune in to the Potter Watch, which again, not shown in the uh, films, but very fun scene in the books. Now back there is normally where you would tell them you were exiting and they would let you go through that door, but I told them I wanted to see the sorting hat. So they're letting me go look at it. You can tell them the same thing. And there he is. Now, instead of telling us a delightful limerick about the different houses, he's actually giving safety instructions, which is very nice. But isn't he cool? I think he's such a great detail, and he looks amazing. And the last detail I'll point out, if you look above you when you're boarding the vehicles, you will see the floating candles. And when you exit, you get dumped into Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods, where there's a ton of more amazing Easter eggs of all things Mr. Filch has confiscated from students. But I can't go through all of them right now, because i got to save stuff for other videos, you know? If you want a Harry Potter Easter eggs details exclusive video, we can do that. Just let me know. Asking if you can see the queue is an amazing way to immerse yourself into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And I highly recommend any Potter fan does it, even if they don't want to ride the attraction. And again, don't forget to ask if you can do a castle tour. And if there's a spare Hogwarts student, they'll be happy to take you on it. Which means you'd have your own personal tour guide, which is such a fun thing. 
do love going into Hogwarts. Ride makes me want to throw up, but I love going in that castle. Oh, and for the record, Hogwarts isn't the only building you can take a tour of. If they have the spare bank staff over at Gringotts, you can take a tour there as well. Again, it all depends on how many team members they have available and if the attraction ha is running somewhat slow. Uh, but you can always ask be really nice and hopefully that's a little magical moment you can have. Whew. All that Hogwarts touring made me thirsty. And there's nowhere better to quench your thirst than the hog's head. The hog's head is connected to the three broomsticks, but it often has an easier entrance and trying to get through the busy restaurant. Just come back behind here. Look at the beautiful patio. This is a great place to eat when it's not 10,000 degrees. It used to be a little nicer when there wasn't Velocicoaster back here. Not that I don't love Velocicoaster because I am obsessed with it, but this is a really good place to grab a spot to eat. Not a lot of people realize that's back there, maybe for the cooler months. But in this way, we can get access to the Hogshead. The Hogshead has a variety of beverages, including a few of the exclusive beers made just for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. If you know me, you know I love it when a theme park has a craft beer you can't get anywhere else. Uh, they also have some other brews from the United Kingdom on tap. They do fire whiskey, a couple of wines, and another pro tip, you can get your favorite non-alcoholic beverages in here as well, including all three types of butter beer. There's usually a much shorter line to come in here than there is to wait at one of the carts out there. So this is the best place to get your butterbeer IMO. And while you may take a look at the menu and you may take a look at the taps here, you won't see everything that's available because that's right, there is a secret menu here at the Hogshead. Before I order my secret drink, I want to tell you two more things. One, this is a full liquor bar, which a lot of people don't realize. Uh, they don't carry any soda products or like ginger ale or ginger beer, no Coke products or anything in the Wizarding World. But if you wanted like a vodka lemonade, they can do that. Additionally, I want to point out this beautiful hog's head mug, this souvenir cup right here. I purchased one of these for myself over at Universal Studios Hollywood. The price for the hog's head cup does vary based on what beer you put into it. Um, you can only put beers and ciders in there. You can't put like wine or liquor in there. Um, but it's well, between four or five dollars more than just buying it on its own. However, the pro of buying it is that you do get a dollar off refills if you refill with the Wizarding World beers. So if you are going to buy more than one beer and you want a nice take home, it may be worth getting the cup, only you can decide that. It does look cool though. Here it is, my secret menu purchase. This is my favorite of the secret menu drinks. I almost got something else because there's actually several things. Where's Sirius? I got just so distracted just now. Oh, he's in there. It's just very, very bright. You can hardly see him. Um, there are several, several secret menu drinks, but this is my favorite, so why wouldn't I get my favorite? Um, uh, but this is, to you and I, called the Deathly Hallows, but you, they can't call it that. So to order it, you technically need to say that you want a triple layered beer with Strongbow Cider, Hogshead Brew, and Guinness. Cheers. I love it so much. I love it because it somehow is perfectly balanced, even though you have three very different flavors going into it. The Strongbow is really sweet, but it helps balance out the darkness from the Guinness, as well as the Hogshead Ale kind of cuts how heavy the Guinness is. The Hogshead Ale, as you might guess, you can only get here in the Hogshead. You can get the Dragon Scale multiple places in the Wizarding World, uh, but the Hogshead you can only get right here. So I love that I had a drink that incorporated that. Like I said, there's other secret menu drinks as well. My other favorite is called the Hogshead Bite, which is their version of a snake bite. A snake bite um, over in the UK and England is made with harp ale and strongbow cider. Here it's made with Hogshead Brew and strongbow cider. So that's another good one to get. There's all kinds of secret menu drinks. You can order fire whiskey shots and add it to things. I'm not telling you to put it with butterbeer, but I'm just saying. They can't pour it in a butterbeer, but you can. And then it's called fire beer. I just made that up, but let's make it happen. I don't know what it is about having a, a beverage, but for many of us, it makes us want to write people a letter. Maybe it's a text message that you're going to regret later. But you know what? For me, it's something I'm going to get delivered by Owl to a dear friend. I don't think I'll regret that. But we are headed into the Owl Post post office here in Hogsmeade, and I'm going to pen a letter long form to my dearest friend. First of all, I love the detail in here of all the different owls. Some of them are, you know, out making deliveries, but they make noises, some of them move. 
you can see that they've, you know, used the facilities. And I like that this one, while out on a delivery, has a trophy. Good for you, little owl. Good for you. Let's pick out a postcard. So this is a postcard set and it's got a variety of nice photos of Harry Potter. $12.95 for that, a 10 pack. And then they also have, this is one of my favorite things to buy in the Wizarding World. Actually, all of this art was done by artists that called themselves Mina Lima and it's uh, a team of people that did all of the graphics for the films. So any textbook, any candy wrapper, any newspaper, anything like visual, they designed it all. And um, these are copies of some of their work which is a really great take home. And these are about six, these are $6 each. Maybe they vary depending on how detailed they are. So they usually have more of these in some of the other shops. This one's eight, because it has a little. Um, but I'm gonna pick between these two. I feel as though he reminds me a lot of the Whomping Willow, because the Whomping Willow is full of chaos and so is he. I got this card. They also do sell stamps here, but they're just regular forever stamps, whatever that is. Uh, no cool Harry Potter stamps, but there will be a cool Harry Potter stamp, just a different kind of stamp. Stay tuned. Um, but you have to buy a whole book. So if you remember, pack a stamp with you. But you know what? I thought I can use a book of stamps because we got mammoth mail to send out. Shameless plug for our Patreon. Go check it out. We send mail every month, personalized to you. Anyway, let's write a letter. Dear Max. That's Duckfist's real name if you didn't know that. His name's not Duckfist, I know, it's shocking. Dear Max, I looked for a Dobby card, but sadly they didn't have one. I know how much you love that little elf. See ya real soon. XOXO, your partner in chaos. Molly McAwesome. All right, I've written my letter to Max. I'm not going to dox him and give away his address, but now the magic happens. Oh, it's so cool! And off it goes. The owls will take it now. I just think mailing someone a postcard from Hogsmeade is such a fun little thing. Getting real mail is fun, especially if you're an adult and it's not a bill or like a political ad. Oh my gosh, if I were to get a postcard from someone, I would be thrilled. So, um, another little thing you could do is that if you got like that postcard pack or you picked out one of those cards that you really liked the artwork on, you could mail it to yourself and then maybe you'll forget about it and by the time you get home, you get like a little magic waiting for you uh, as a, to cure those post-trip blues. It happens to me a lot when I order things off Amazon. I forget I do it and then they arrive and I'm like, oh, what a treat. Who sent me this? I do. Wow. How generous. And a little bonus detail that goes along well with our owl post is that right here on the side of the owl post, there's actually a howler, which is the letters that yell at you and they are being delivered to different people and they're very funny if you listen to them for a while. For this next secret, I'm going to talk about some of the least known merchandise and some of, in my opinion, the best merchandise you can buy in the Wizarding World. Now, I'm not going to talk about wands. I, I'm going to talk about some secret spells in a little bit. And I do think a wand is one of the best things you can buy. But a lot of people know about the wands. A lot of people know about the robes. Obviously, people know about things like cups and t-shirts and classic souvenirs with Harry Potter on it. But there's some really cool things you can get and some better versions of things you can get that consider make it a take home as well. I'll explain when we get to that part. Hint, it's at Honeydews. Hint, it also involves butter beer. But we're gonna start right here at the Alphas. First up, did you know you can get personalized items in the Wizarding World? That's right. They can actually emboss your name on things like these luggage tags as well as the bookmarks. The bookmarks I think are my favorite because I'm constantly reading a Harry Potter book. I didn't know you could read. Uh, but they have all the different houses. The bookmarks are $14.95. The luggage tags are 11 And then you do pay to personalize them. It's $10 to personalize things. So it'll look something like this. 
but I do think that's a really cool, unique souvenir that you're clearly not going to get anywhere else. There's also more personalizable things inside. Quick ask the audience here, is this Dervish and Banjis or Dervish and Bangs? Because when I read the books, I always read it as Dervish and Bangs, but I am constantly listening to the audiobooks read by Jim Dale, and he says Banjis. So now I just don't know. Another thing you can personalize, though, note, they are doing it at the main stores at the uh, theme parks, not any longer at the Wizarding World stores, just because these are so small um, and have a small occupancy in these stores. But you can personalize your very own Quidditch jersey, and they're all number seven because the Seeker is number seven. And you can put your name right here on the back. Now, if you want to just buy it, it will come with a famous Seeker from that house. So of course, Slytherin's has Malfoy. Certainly no idea who Gryffindor's is going to have. Oh, Potter, how surprising. I don't know why that sounded so sarcastic. I, I like Harry Potter a lot. He's a great character. I actually weirdly think he's underrated, even though he's the main character. That's not the point. Um, I'm assuming we're going to have Diggory on the back of this one. Yep, there he is. And uh, Ra Ravenclaw? Will Chang? Will Cho Chang? Yep, that's nice. You never see a lot of Cho Chang or Ravenclaw appreciation, so it's nice to see they have something. Um, but you can actually personalize it with your own name. Again, you need to do it at the main stores up at the front of both here at Islands of Adventure and over at um, Universal Studios Florida. They may also do it at the big Universal Studios store in CityWalk. But I would double check since that offering does happen. I've been thinking about doing it forever. I've been thinking about getting Molly on the back of a Slytherin jersey for so long and I've yet to do it. Should I do it? You can use your discount if you have one on the shirt itself or the bookmark itself or the luggage tag itself, but you can't use it on the actual personalization. If this is something you want to do, I would give yourself plenty of time if you're only going to be here for one day and make that one of your earlier priorities throughout the day, so there's enough time for them to make the shirt for you. <laughs> Continuing on with some of the best souvenirs you can get in the Wizarding World, we're headed into the famous Honey Dukes candy shop for things you might have been buying anyway but you can upgrade them to be a take home category i'm talking about some of the candies that you might have wanted to try from wizarding world some of them actually have collectible tins and collectible versions of them that make them a souvenir that you can bring home and remember as opposed to just a candy you eat while you're here first up the famous chocolate frogs chocolate frogs themselves are 14 dollars. they have milk chocolate and they now have dark chocolate frogs which I think is very fun. I saw that on my friend Miss Wizarding World's Instagram. Um, someone suggested on there that they only put dark wizards in the dark chocolate frogs, which I do think would be fun, but that's not the case. Now, again, a chocolate frog is $14, and it includes one card at random from the many, many collectible trading cards that they have, just like it does in the story. It used to only be the Four House Founders, and they've expanded it to include many more witches and wizards that you could get on your chocolate frog card. But they also sell this collectible tin chocolate frog for $30. Now, I know $30 is a lot for a piece of chocolate, but discounts apply on both of them. And it's something you might want to consider because you can reuse the tin. You could use it as a jewelry holder. You could use it for little knickknacks, put it on your desk. I don't know what you want to do with it. Live your life. And it also comes with five cards in it. Now, the main difference about the five cards is that you are getting these five cards. It's not five cards at random. You're getting the four house founders and Albus Dumbledore along with your milk chocolate frog. So I'm not telling you that this is worth double this, but I am saying if you're considering getting a chocolate frog and you want a little take home, you might want to consider the chocolate frog tin. Speaking of reusable tins, they also have one for Birdie Bots Every Flavored Beans. Now, the non-reusable pack of Birdie Bots is $13. The collectible is $25. So, again, we're looking at about a double increase. However, again, you're getting this nice collectible tin that you could use for something. So, maybe it's an upgrade you want to consider. They also have these goblets filled with some of the bulk candy. You've got Sherbert Lemons and Fizzing Wisbees. These are also $25, so they feel... They're plastic. I couldn't tell if they're glass or plastic, but they're that, like, thick plastic, and they say Honey Dukes on them. On a better price, 
point, but maybe less tasty. You have this Love Potion, which is $10, and the Felix Felicities, which is $11. And I confirmed with a witch that you can reseal both of them. They're going to be like liquid candy, so like sugar water, basically. I don't think I would buy this to consume it. I would buy it because the bottles are cool, and you could turn it into something on your desk. Maybe you're craftier than me. You could turn it into like some jewelry or a knickknack, um, but... Unlike the the paper cardboard that a lot of the candies come in, these are pretty sturdy plastic, so you might be able to do something with them. And lastly, in Honeydukes, sometimes they have actual glass jars full of candy. Sometimes they're just branded Honeydukes with different things. This one is You Know Poo, which is a thing from Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Um, it's $12. It's basically M&Ms, but you get this You Know Poo constipation sensation that's gripping the nation jar, which is very funny. So... Again, I, I can't tell you whether or not expensive wizard candy is worth it to you, but if you're looking for an easy take home, if you're looking for something cute like a collectible tin, it may be a good upgrade for you. And now we have the last one on my list, which I think is the best one and something I just learned recently, even though I come here all the time. Taking my own advice and going into the Hogshead for Butterbeer. This is actually not even that long for Butterbeer. That's incredibly short, but air conditioning greater than but also look how long the line is for the three broomsticks. That's another reason breakfast might be a good choice if all you want to do is eat in there. But if you want to eat lunch food, go early, like right when it becomes lunch. Or weirdly at like four o'clock in between lunch and dinner. Okay friends, here is one of the best Wizarding World tips, best kept secrets. Here I have the souvenir butterbeer cup. It's about $14. You can get it at the butterbeer carts. You can get it at the hogshead. You can get it at the restaurant locations. Again, it's about $14 before any kind of discount. And you can put the frozen or the regular, which is what this is, not the hot in there. The regular butterbeers are $8. So this is a little less than double that. But what I'm about to tell you might make it worth it for you. Because number one, you're probably getting a butterbeer. And now you have a souvenir cup that you can use at home. But did you know you can refill this? Now, not with butterbeer. Don't let me don't let me oversell it. You can refill this in the Wizarding World with teas, lemonades, and non-alcoholic ciders. So they're specialty teas. Put it in there. They're over four dollars a cup. You can refill it for one seventy at the Three Broomsticks, at the Hogshead, at the Leaky Cauldron, etc. You can also refill it around Universal Orlando with soda for less than two dollars. Same price. So, if you are a soda drinker and you're going to be buying soda and also butterbeer, it may be worth it to get the souvenir cup and then you can refill it with a flavored tea here in the Wizarding World and then you could get a Diet Coke in Jurassic Park and then you could get a Sprite in Marvel Landing. I don't know what kind of sodas you like to drink. I don't know why I assume this person's drinking so many different sodas because soda drinkers I know tend to stick to like one thing. They're like, I am a, I am a Diet Coke person and I will not change that for anyone. My mom's a Diet Pepsi person. She loves living in the South, I'll tell you what. Anyway, refillable butter beer souvenir mug, TLDR, $14, can refill for $1.70 with specialty drinks here in Wizarding World and sodas throughout the land. Cheers. Did you even go to the Wizarding World if you didn't get a mustache? I mean, come on. We're gonna start on the Universal Studios Florida, the Diagon Alley side, and I'm gonna show you a couple of details that I love outside of Diagon Alley while you're still in London. I get it, you're really excited to go behind the brick wall and into the Wizarding World, but you're missing out on some really cool stuff right outside. For starters, have you ever noticed what street this is? It's Grimmauld Place, and fans of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix will know immediately what that street is. And you'll notice that there are several doors here. There's 15, 13, 12, and 11. And you've probably noticed that 12 is the only even numbered one and that the building looks completely different. That's because, as you may know, this is the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, the Black family residence. So the building looks completely different than the others because it's normally hidden from the sunlight, so it's not so worn down. And if you pay close attention, you may see someone peeking out the window. Hi, creature. 
Love you, buddy. Okay, bye. Also, as a little bonus, this takes a great photo if you stand on the doorstep of number 12 and knock on the door or whatever. It makes a really fun Instagram pic. But moving on from Creature, we're gonna head to the other side of London before we go into Diagon Alley. Now the phone booth right here is one that some people know about as you might often see a little bit of a queue to get in there, um, either to take your picture in the iconic red phone booth or because you know there's a fun Easter egg. But there's actually an entrance to a different location right here that a lot of people walk right by. Let's go in the phone booth first because one, it's a great Instagram pic and two, I just can't resist dialing. It is very hot in here. My sweat mustache is immense. But uh, if you are familiar with, again, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, you know that Harry has to go with Mr. Weasley to the Ministry of Magic for his hearing about casting Expecto Patronum, and they have to use the muggle entrance, which means they have to use the phone booth. And so if you come in here, pick up the phone, and dial magic, something magical happens. <laughs> Oh, before I get too into this, kids, this is a rotary phone. This is how phones used to work. You pick this up, this is called the receiver. And then you dial six, two, four, four, two. It's ringing, it's ringing. Welcome to the Ministry of Magic. The visitor's entrance is closed. They do wish me a pleasant day though, so I appreciate that. So hot. Okay, since we can't get into the Ministry of Magic, since it just happened to be closed today, I'll show you the other entrance I'm talking about. Did you know you can actually get a hint that Diagon Alley is up ahead before you even get there? Book fans, this one's for you. Because in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, it says that Harry wouldn't have noticed it was there. The people hurrying by didn't glance at it. Their eyes slid from the big bookshop. Interesting, big bookshop on one side to the record shop on the other. Record shop. As if they didn't see the leaky cauldron at all. In fact, Harry had the most peculiar feeling that only he and Hagrid could see it. This right here, friends, is the entrance to the leaky cauldron. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I spent many minutes before I started filming this confused because there should be a sign right there that says the leaky cauldron. And I was like, did I make that up? Because there's no sign that says leaky cauldron. But then I Googled it and I didn't make it up. There's definitely supposed to be a sign there, but clearly it's like under refurbishment. Anyway, keep your eye out. There should be a sign right there. But it looks like this. Here's a photo. But in addition to that, you can see that much like number 12 Grimmauld Place, leaky cauldron is all weathered and different right here. So this is how Harry and Hagrid would get into the Leaky Cauldron, uh, as you may recall from Sorcerer's Stone. And to kick this detail up a notch even further, it is well documented that the Diagon Alley is based on a real road in London called Charging Cross Road. And you can see that both on the bookstore address and if you look up the street sign up there. Um, the real Charging Cross Road is known for all of its bookshops, so it makes sense that Harry Potter's Diagon Alley would be based on there as well. You could go to the real Charging Cross Road. Maybe you can. Let me know down in the comments. I wish I could get into the Leaky Cauldron this way. Remember how they do? They go in through that, and then they come out the Leaky Cauldron, and then they do the bricks. So that would have been right here. But there's a lot of us, so we go in this way. Come on, muggles. Before we go in, though, I, I've noticed the night bus conductor and head are back, so I think it'd be rude if we didn't say hi. I love talking to them. I asked them if they knew of any secrets in Diagon Alley, and they said butterbeer. No one knows about it. They have this thing called butterbeer. Oh! Yeah, man. I don't think anyone knows about it. Is that new? Oh, uh, it's probably very brand new almost okay. not. Fresh. Great. No one's, yes. no one's heard of it? No one has no, ever heard of it. I will. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Perfect. Secret safe with me. Okay, listen, Molly, you yeah. enjoy that. Thank you. <laughs> I would join you for one, but it goes right through me. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're funny. Talk to them. Oh, I love when there's like people to talk to in the wizarding world. I wish there was a little more of that. I wish, I know they can't, they're not gonna have like the likeness of Harry Potter walking around, um, but I love when there's witches and wizards and other magical people to chat with. But now, let's go to that guy. If you listen closely, you can hear the bricks moving and then all of a sudden, you're here. You're in Diagon Alley. It's amazing, it's wonderful. It's without a doubt the best theme park lane reveal 
of all time. You literally cannot see this land anywhere except for behind this wall. It's, oh, I will never get sick of this. Isn't this amazing? I feel this joy every time I come in here. I could probably make a several hour long video just walking through Diagon Alley and talking about every single little sign and teeny tiny detail. But I'm gonna stick with some of the more uh, exciting ones, some of the lesser known ones, some things that you can do and experience on your next trip to the Wizarding World. But truly, take a moment to look around when you're in Diagon Alley. It's one of my favorite things to do It's just read the signs, read the walls, listen. Uh, there's a lot of audio Easter eggs as well. And isn't it just the best in here? Isn't it just the absolute best? Like, look, like just, I'm, I'm, I can't help myself. These aren't even on my list. I just have to show them. Look, we are at uh, the Cauldron Shop. And right here, there's a sign in the window that says Hogwarts appointments uh, for Hogwarts students to get their cauldrons. And there, look, there's self-stirring cauldrons in the window. It's hard to see with the reflection, but I'm just telling you, there, the amount of detail in here, I feel like I'll never take it all in because it's so vast. There is, however, one giant detail that no one can ignore, and that is the beautiful dragon on top of Gringotts Bank. Now that beautiful lady, she's a Ukrainian iron belly, and it is a she, and she is the dragon that escapes from the depths of Gringotts with Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the Deathly Hallows. And we love her so much, but you probably love her not only because she looks amazing, but because she breathes a real fire. And I am here to tell you how to get the picture of that. What a lot of people don't realize is that she breathes fire on a schedule. She's a, a kind dragon that way. She's orderly, she's type A. She likes to keep things on track. So sometimes people hear the train or they hear other noises and think the dragon's about to blow fire, but the times that she blows fire is on the tens. So on the o'clock, on the 10, on the 20, on the 30, that's when she breathes fire. Unless, because not only is she an orderly dragon, she's a kind dragon, she's a thoughtful dragon, it's too windy. Yes, that's right. You may notice that she sits in between the two corners of the alley right there, and she's breathing fire that gets over 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want that touching the buildings now, do we? The witches and wizards would not like that. I'm sure they could put it out a little augmenty, but like that's a lot of work, you know. So if it's too windy, she won't breathe fire. So if it becomes the 10 and you hear the rumblings and the grumblings and you think she's about to breathe fire and she doesn't, it's too windy. So watch her again in 10 more minutes because it could change. But I tell you what, it never gets old watching her breathe fire. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times and it amazes me every single time. And now that you know when she breathes fire, you can plan your picture so you get a really cool picture with her with the fire breathing in the background. And as a little bonus tip, if you are trying to take pictures with her or of her for your social media, um, consider going to the other sides of her as well. I know everybody wants the dead on shot, but it's usually pretty crowded. So also take some from the sides because you can get amazing pictures like these. Last pro tip with our dragon friend. She usually rumbles and grumbles and then stops and then rumbles and grumbles again and breathes the fire. So if she stops after the first one, hold the pose for a second. It might not be a wind alert. She usually just takes a break. She's tired. She's been living downstairs underground for so long. She doesn't have the lung capacity to deal with the Florida humidity all the time. From the extremely hot, hot, hot dragon, let's go into the coolest, both literally and figuratively, part of Diagon Alley. And that's Nocturne Alley, which a lot of people don't realize this is here. They don't realize you can even go down here, but you should go down here unless you're, you know, scared of dark wizards. But I'm sure the air conditioning will lure you in. And yes, I literally mean air conditioning because while it's designed to look like you're outside, we're actually inside and it's air conditioned here. Maybe this is why it's my favorite part of the Wizarding World. Or maybe it's because I'm a Slytherin. Who's to say? But let's go because there's a lot of cool stuff down here. Yeek, I love it in here so much. For starters, if you are doing wand magic, there are several spells back here, including my favorite spell right here. Let's try it out, see how I'm doing today with my wand magic. Locomotor Chimney Sweep. 
I love this one because I like watching the little house elf scale up the side of the chimney and then go back down. Lots of details to look at in here, like these different skulls right here. That one would be a, a troll, then you've got a, a witch or a wizard, a house elf, and a Cornish pixie. They seriously could walk around in here all day. But we're going to go into my favorite store in the Wizarding World, which is Borgen and Burks. This is the not so great store that Voldemort himself worked at right after Hogwarts, where they sell some, let's just say some items that maybe you wouldn't want the Ministry of Magic to find out you own. And not only are there some very cool Easter eggs in here, this is a secret spot to purchase something that many of you want to purchase in the Wizarding World without the line. Walking in, I'm physically incapable of not pointing out oh, the Hand of Glory and the cursed necklace that Malfoy gives to Katie Bell. Speaking of Malfoy, here's the vanishing cabinet that he repairs in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and that's how they sneak the Death Eaters into Hogwarts. And you may remember that he practices with a bird, so if you listen closely, you can hear a bird, and actually if you put your hand up to it, you can hear the bird vibrating in there. Last thing I'll point out before I talk about the merchandise I wanted to is that if you look up on the second layer, uh, you are gonna see this gigantic troll foot umbrella holder. That's never exclusively mentioned in the movies, but in the book they specifically call it out um, as being a part of the black family decor, and specifically that people, especially Tonks, keep tripping over it. Also, members of Universal Creative said that the majority of the stuff in this shop up on the second level was actually used in the film to decorate Borgen and Burks and other locations, so that's really cool as well. Um, but okay, that was my last detail fact before I talk about what I wanted to talk about, which are wands. Buying a wand is something a lot of people look forward to, but you may know that there can be a very long line at Ollivander's, especially if you want to do the full wand experience. So if you're more on the darker wizard side, it could be fun to kind of make your own wand experience by coming to buy one here at Borgen and Burks. Certainly more fun than buying one at like the big Universal Studios stores up at the front of the park. And while I do love the wand experience, I have bought several ones here. They don't have every witch and wizard. As you can imagine, they tend to only have the darker ones. So I bought... Voldemort's wand here. It gave me a lot of wicked power. I've also bought Sirius Black's wand here, even though we all know he's not actually evil. Um, but you can also get Narcissa Malfoy's here, the Death Eater wands here, uh, Draco's wand. So characters that tend to lean towards my house, you can find their wands here. This one is Voldemort's. This one is Bellatrix's. This one is Narcissa Malfoy's. Here's Draco's. Here's Sirius's. This one I believe is Snape. And then you've got generic Death Eater, a, a favorite of mine. The, the one wand I, I love to point out is that this very cool snake wand next to Voldemort's. Unfortunately, that one's Peter Pettigrew's. And as much as I love Slytherin and have Slytherin pride and think that's a dope wand, there's no chance I would buy Wormtail's wand. A, a funny story about me is that one time I was at my friend's two-year-old's birthday party and there was a little boy there, he was probably like five, and he had a Harry Potter shirt on. So of course I was like, hey, do you like Harry Potter? I like Harry Potter too. And he's like telling me about how much he likes Harry Potter. And I said, who's your favorite character? And he goes, mm, Peter Pettigrew. And I was like, what? Excuse me? Do you, Wormtail's your favorite character? And he's like, yeah. And I almost yelled at a child until Alan was like, please don't yell at this child. Please don't yell at the child and make a scene. But I had to be like physically walked away from this five-year-old because what kind of lunatic's favorite character is Peter Pettigrew? Like at least pick Voldemort because at least he's got like really awesome powers and he's like the Darth Vader of the series. But like Peter Pettigrew, he's the worst. The only thing worse you could pick is Umbridge. And I don't even know if that's worse. Oh, anyway, I, I literally physically can't resist saying all the Easter eggs. Um, so I have to point this one out too, because this one in the uh, chest right there, you may notice it starts shaking every now and again. That's because you know what's in there, a boggart. Uh, I wonder what it would turn into for me. Um, if, if that were to come out for me as a boggart, I think it would be like Ursula and um, four of her legs are holding donuts and four of her legs are holding hot dogs and then she's 
yelling at me that I have to watch the Fantastic Beast movies over and over again. Um, it's probably what I would see. So let me know what you would see uh, down in the comments. I'm gonna go think about that now. Never stop exploring when you're in the Wizarding World because a lot of people don't realize you can also exit right here into more of Nocturnality. If you see a door, try and open it. See what happens. The worst that happens, it won't open. But I'm going to show you another spell around here because this one has a special effect that people often miss. While I'm waiting to do the spell, just as a courtesy, I highly dissuade you from taking flash photos in here because it will ruin the effects of the of nocturnality for both you and the other guests around you. But if you have like night vision on your iPhone or other phone, um, or just your phone in general probably takes better video, you can actually see and read some of the signs up here, which is really neat. Here's some of my pictures. This magic spell spot is kind of a twofer and people usually only do the first half of it. First of all, it's called Trackle Shanks Locksmith, so I bet you can guess what the spell is before you even walk up to it. But it's Alohomora, which is the unlock spell. And once you successfully do it, not only will an eye appear, but the door handle will light up. Go ahead and grab that door handle. And then once you're done screaming, listen. You know what? Let's keep the wand fun going because there are actually two secret spells in Diagon Alley that don't appear on the maps. There's no indicator on the ground, but if you know about them, you can do them. Oh, dragon, I'm obsessed with you. All right, the first of the two secret spells is over this way, past Wiseacre's wizarding equipment. Here is Scribulus. This is the stationery and writing shop which you can go into and buy those things. And there, there are two spells here. One of them is on the map. That is in the window right here with the feather. That's Wingardium Leviosa. But there's actually one over in this window too that's unmarked. To do this spell, you are gonna stand right here. You are gonna point your wand at the scrolls of parchment and you're gonna make like an M to the left and you're gonna say Aparicio, Aparicio, Aparicio. Oh, it did it, it did it. Let's see what it says. Protect your privacy with invisible ink. And what's fun about this one is it has different messages. So if I do it again, there's no line behind me. Aparicio. Aparicio. There it goes. Secret meeting time. The secret society will have a secret meeting at a secret time and place. So they're just advertising their very secret ink. Here it's scribulous. And you can see Here's the sign for the invisible ink. You love it. All right, let's go do the other one. The second of the secret spells is down this way. In the window here at Slug and Jigger's Apothecary. Right next to Mr. Mole Pepper's Apothecary. Do you think that they have a, a battle going for the elite apothecary? Like, do you think they're in stiff competition all the time? I wonder which one's superior. For this secret spell, you are gonna aim your wand down kind of at the bottom of this large barrel of dragon dung. You're gonna make a sideways P shape and say Engorgio. Engorgio. And what's so great about this one is not only did it again. Mega. Not only does the dung get bigger, but it smells like beef jerky. I guess that's what dragon dung smells like, but it smells like beef jerky or dog food. Uh, so lean in, get a nice whiff. Smell the magic. TM. That's not trademarked. And I hope no one does. Also, if you can't remember how to do a spell or forget where the secret spells are, just look for a friendly or maybe not so friendly based on the wand, which like Sydney, and they can help you out. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Whew. Doing all that magic sure worked up a little appetite for me. So I'd like to get myself a snack. But before I do, I'm gonna show you one of my other favorite things you can do in the wizarding world that not enough people do. And that is exchange your muggle money for wizard money here at the Gringotts Money Exchange. You can go in, have a conversation with a real goblin, and you can swap both plastic or paper money for paper wizard money. It comes in tens and twenties and you can use it anywhere in the Wizarding World and anywhere in Universal Orlando, dollar for dollar, but it's way more fun.
Thank you. Allow me to explain. A brief photograph is preferable to an assistant stare. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have a question? Yes, can I get some money? Your decision, of course. Three box bank notes can be purchased for 10 or 20 model dollars. We will handle the conversion for you. Thank you. Got my Green God's bank notes. So again, they have 10s and 20s. And what's really interesting is the goblin actually explains that we muggles are too stupid to understand the conversion between the coins that Harry and the gang uses, so the uh, sickles, the canuts, and the galleons. So they've authorized Gringotts banknotes in 10s and 20 to make it easier for us, which is funny that the goblin's so mean. Um, and you can talk to him. I asked him how much money they had available for me. He said 10s and 20s. I asked him his name. He said I could just call him sir. He said, you can take a picture of me. I'd rather you take a picture than just stare at me. So talk to the goblin, but I think this is a really fun way to interact with the wizarding world. I bought one of my wands this way. Well, when I did the Ollivander's experience, I got enough money to buy a wand and that felt really magical. It'd also be a really good way to give your kids a certain amount of spending money for souvenirs. And um, I'm gonna go spend mine right now on a snack. <laughs> Going into Sugar Plums for my snack. Sugar Plums is the sweet shop on this side of Wizarding World. Of course, the more famous and the bigger sweet shop is on the Hogsmeade side. That's Honey Dukes that the kids go to when they visit Hogsmeade on the weekends. But they have a lot of the same things here in Sugar Plums. They don't use it quite as many offerings, but you're gonna have your chocolate frogs, your birdie bots, and your bakery case full of goodies in here. I'm just very much hoping my favorite treat isn't sold out because they only make a limited quantity of the things in the bakery cases and sometimes things sell out and that makes me sad. Ooh, good, it looks nice and full today. I don't know which one to pick. I kind of had my heart set on a ginger newt cookie because I think they're an underrated treat, but now that I'm seeing the pumpkin pasties, they look really good today. And I also really like the pumpkin cake. What's a girl to do? Got my pumpkin pasty. I really went in thinking I was gonna come out with a ginger new, but the pumpkin swayed me again. So it's a buttery flaky crust with pumpkin filling inside. It teeny tiniest reminds me of a Pop-Tart, like a really good Pop-Tart, because you have this really buttery flaky crust, and then it's got the pumpkin filling inside, but it's not super duper sweet like artificial pumpkin. It's it's clearly real pumpkin, and it's got all those autumnal spices I like, like cinnamon and nutmeg. I'm a diehard pumpkin person. I love that there's pumpkin treats available year round in the Wizarding World. If you do want a sweeter pumpkin treat, I do really like that pumpkin cake as well. Um, but as someone who doesn't like super sweet things and is obsessed with pumpkin, plus Harry and the gang eat these all the time, not a bad treat. Also, before I forget, regarding the wizard money, one, if you're getting change back, they're gonna give it to you in muggle dollars. Makes sense. And two, you can still apply your discount if you have a discount before you pay for something. So. Universal gives really good annual pass holder discounts. You get discounts on basically everything, including like quick service food here. Um, so make sure to have them scan your pass first and then pay with your uh, wizard money. Okay, nerds, listen up. This next one is for you. This is probably the most in-depth Easter egg detail I have ever talked about. This is a deep cut, friends. This is a deep cut. I hope you're ready to go on this journey with me. I'm going to tell you a little story about a gentleman named Bowman Wright. And if you stick with me, you can dazzle your friends and family with this fun fact. And by dazzle, I mean they're probably going to tell you to go play outside or get some fresh air or do something not related to Harry Potter. But I'll be proud of you. So, right here right here get it <laughs> i didn't even mean to do that oh my gosh anyway right here in diagon alley there are actually two spells you can do with your magic wand here at the blacksmith shop but that's not the point the point is that the owner of the blacksmith shop right here is a gentleman named bowman wright it says blacksmith diagon alley now who is bowman wright is that just a name that 
Universal Orlando slapped on the sign right here. Of course it's not. You see, back when Quidditch first started, wait, Quidditch? Why am I talking about Quidditch? I thought we were talking about Bowman Wright. Don't worry, friends, it's all gonna come back around. Back when Quidditch first started, they had to catch a very small magical bird called the Golden Snidget. That was how the game ended. It was a very small, less than an inch, quick bird that was gold. That's how the game ended. One player had to catch this teeny tiny, incredibly fast, incredibly tiny bird, and that's what ended the game. Unfortunately though, these sweet little golden snidges quickly started becoming endangered because in their excitement about catching them, the players would often crush them. You don't love that, we don't love that. The magical world didn't love that. We love magical animal conservation. So, someone, invented a magical little ball made out of the finest materials called the Golden Snitch. Now, can you guess who that person could be? If you guessed Bowman right, you would be right, which is why right next to his sign, it says artisan of all things metal, forger of golden snitches. That's right. Bowman Wright invented the golden snitch, which was not a tiny bird, but inspired by one to be what the players catch in a round of Quidditch. And that, friends, is the nerdiest thing I've ever told you about Harry Potter. I thank you for sticking with me. On to the next. This is a fun thing you can do. But first, jellied eel, stewed eels. Oh my goodness, my friend Mr. Eel would be horrified to find this. What if they put him in a pie? Oh, my poor friend. He better never come here. Note to self, on my next friend date with Mr. Eel, Diagon Alley is not the place to go. Make sure when you're visiting Diagon Alley, you pop into Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. Even if you don't plan on buying a robe, it's always fun to look around. I mean, for example, if you didn't come in here, you wouldn't know you can buy Draco Malfoy's furry hat. And wouldn't that be a shame if you didn't know that? But this is where you can buy your robes of your different houses. You can also buy other apparel, such as sweaters. And uh, they also have things like stockings, scarves, hats, other apparel. But uh, I like to pay a visit to a friend in here. My friend is the mirror, if you come talk to her. Come look in the mirror, check your outfit out. She said my robes were odd. That's kind of rude. I feel like that was passive aggressive, Mir. The, the mirror's like that one friend that you're not quite sure why you keep them around because they're like not that nice, but maybe they've been your friend for a long time. So at this point, it's like, it's kind of hard to cut them out. Because first she said, those are very interesting robes you have on. And then she said, wow, you're one of the few people that can pull off that look successfully. And I'm just like, Okay, you're clearly a fellow Slytherin. Not that kind, but I recommend coming to say hi to the mirror because you never know what she could say. Also, while you're in here, make sure to look at these costumes because some of them were actually screen used, like that one is Minerva McGonagall's, and that one is Gilderoy Lockhart's. And now, friends, I have to bring the mood down for a minute. I'm so sorry, we've been having such a nice time. But it's now when I must remind you that, as much as we all love Diagon Alley, it is sitting on the hallowed halls, the hallowed water tank, if you will, that was once Jaws the Ride. That's right, the greatest theme park attraction of all time. You still live right here, Jaws the Ride, and they closed it to make way for Diagon Alley, which pains me in my very soul, because I love Jaws and Harry Potter. Why can't we have both? It wasn't my decision. Anyway, for my fellow Jaws fans out there, there are several nods to Jaws throughout Diagon Alley. I'm going to show you my favorite ones. There's also several places where they use things like the crates and the chains from the attraction in the Wizarding World. So in a way, Jaws lives on. But I'm going to show you the best of the Jaws Easter eggs right now. Did I ever ride Jaws the ride? Thank you for asking. Technically, yes. Here's a young Molly at Universal Studios at the ripe age of eight. She was so excited to ride Jaws the Ride. She loved Great White Shark so much, she could not wait. She walked past every other attraction straight to Amity, made her parents get in the line with her. She got on the boat. She took one look at the shark fin in the water, 
and she hit her eyes for 98% of the rest of the ride, only opening them slightly at the very last moment to see a piece of the shark and realized, hey, maybe it's not as scary as I think it is. But I was still concerned. My mom spent the entire rest of the day trying to convince me to ride Jaws again. After all, that's the reason we ditched our beloved Walt Disney World, was solely so I could ride Jaws the ride, and now I was too scared to ride it. So it is one of my life's greatest regrets. One day I'll get to Tokyo to ride it for real. But anyway, let's look for some shark teeth. We're back at the apothecary windows, this time at Pepper's Apothecary, because if you look in the window, look in the back right there, you'll actually see there are some shark teeth hanging behind the spleenwort and the leeches. Allow me to be a Jaws nerd just for a second. Just for a second. Uh, that's actually a tiger shark. You can tell by the can opener shaped teeth, not a great white, which is what Bruce the shark in Jaws is. However, the first shark they catch and string up and think that they caught, uh, the right shark is a tiger shark. Oh, what? So, tiger shark, teeth right there. Let's keep going. We're headed back into Nocturne Alley for this next one. This one takes the gift of patience, friends, but it's very fun when you hear it. I cannot wanna go to bed. I am a little drinker and an hour ago, and it's long like to my head. Took ten minutes of me standing here, but shrunken heads right here at the shop called Noggin Bounce which is funny because noggin and bounce are both slang terms for head. Um, the shrunken heads in their loop of things that they say and sing, sing Show Me the Way to Go Home, which is famously sung by the trio Cooper, Brody, and Quint when they're aboard the Orca after drinking and comparing battle scars. Um, and if you stay here long enough, you can hear the shrunken heads sing it. Back in Borgen and Burks to point out they also have some shark teeth. If you look down right when you get in on this crate, they've got a couple of uh, shark mouths, I guess you would say. Shark mouths, I guess, technically, um, that were from Jaws as well. And we actually have to walk out of Diagon Alley to find my favorite of the Jaws nods. It's back in London. Here in the record store I mentioned earlier, you will see one of the album covers for sale is called Here's to Swimming with Bow-Legged Women by an artist called the Quint Trio. In Jaws, Quint, the shark hunter, says here's to swimming with bow-legged women. Here's to swimming with bow-legged women. So that's a very funny nod to him. And again, my favorite of the little Jaws nods. Doesn't make up for its loss, but it helps a little bit, I guess. You know what? It's a good thing we came out here because the next of my favorite things, secrets that you can do here in the Wizarding World, is right here at the Hogwarts Express, which is the train that takes you between the two Wizarding World lands. You do have to have a park-to-park -park ticket for it and know that what you see out the window is different each way. You go from King's Cross to Hogsmeade, you're going to see different things than vice versa. But I personally like going this way the best. Not only is this kind of the, chronologically how Harry and the gang go on the uh, Hogwarts Express, but... um. Wait, while you're still in London, ask one of the attendants how to get to Platform 9 and 3 quarters and just see what happens. I was wondering if you could tell me where Platform 9 and 3 quarters is. Platform 9 and 3 quarters? I think yeah. it'd be in front of you. You have a 9 and a 10 upstairs. Not 9 and 3 quarters. Uh, no. I, There's a wall right there. It'd probably hurt if you try to go through it. That's probably true. I must be confused. Thank you. That's right, if you ask one of the train conductors before you go through the barrier between platforms 9 and 10 how to get to 9 and 3 quarters, they will say something along the lines of, you think you're being funny, that doesn't exist, you must be confused. But once you go through and you're in the Wizarding World, they obviously know what you're talking about. Well, there you have it, 15 of the best kept secrets in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Did you learn something new? Let us know down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, I'm Molly with Mammoth Club. It's been magical. Now go join the club below. Bye! Thank you.